Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Hinsworth, and we're going to get into how to graph translated sine and cosine waves where the coefficient of the function is negative. So the amplitude uh, is a negative number. Okay, and I know amplitude is a positive number because it's a distance above the wave axis, but when you have a negative coefficient, A is negative, and we want to investigate what happens when that lead coefficient A is negative. What does it do? And for those of you that Remember everything you learned last semester when we talked about transformations of functions, when we translated uh, or um, transformed like the, the parabolas and the absolute value functions and all those crazy functions. Well, guess what? You should know what this does. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to give it away. Let's take a look at the parent function, y equals negative sine x, and we're going to graph it for one period only. All right, so here we go. All right. Now, notice uh, if you take a look at it here, a is negative 1, okay? The coefficient of sine x is negative 1, okay? What happens? All right, we know what sine x looks like, but let's take a look at negative sine x. So let's substitute our angles in, all right? So here we have negative sine of 0, and as you guys know, sine of 0 uh, is 0, so negative 0 is 0. Here, next one, we have negative sine of pi halves. So you always evaluate the function first, then take the negative. So sine of pi halves is 1, but then it's negative, so you get negative 1. And then we take the negative of sine of pi. Okay, we're on the left side of the unit circle where the y coordinate is zero. So this one's zero. And then here, negative sine of three halves pi. Okay, now you're at the bottom of the unit circle where the y coordinate is negative one. So a negative of a negative is a positive. So this is positive one, right? Because sine of three halves pi is negative one, but a negative of a negative one is positive. And then you have the negative sine of 2 pi. Now you're one full revolution. You're back on the right side of the unit circle where the y coordinate is 0. So negative 0 is 0. All right. So let's take a look here. Okay. We're going to go up one. We're going to go down one. Okay. And then we are going to uh, go out uh, 2 pi radians. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Label that 2 pi right here and then we are going to plot these points okay so let's do this let's do the do it in purple okay so zero zero starts here just like the parent function sine x and then at pi halves we go up or excuse me down negative one instead of going oh up negative oh this is different than sine x look at that okay and then we have uh, pi comma zero this is pi right here and this is pi halves and this is uh three halves pi so pi halves comma negative one, and then pi comma zero, we're back on the axis. Three halves pi comma one, so we go up one, and then two pi comma zero. All right, and then you sketch the curve, and you don't, you don't do this, okay? I've seen this on, some people do this right here. That's bad, and you're gonna get a negative mark, okay? <laughs> don't do that, this is a no-no. This is a wave function, and it's a smooth curve, so let's get rid of all those imperfections, and let's curve it, okay? So no, 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 no. Oh, not too much. Okay, so you don't want to curve too much. It's a it's a smooth curve. These are not semicircles, but they're close. Kind of kind of seems that way. All right, so that is negative sine x. All right, there's your. So what this does, if you remember the sine function, and I'm going to graph it here. So sine function sine of x does this, as you guys know. Okay. All right. So down here in red, that's sine x. All right, in purple, it's negative sine x. So what does the negative do? Well, it reflects across the, uh, the x-axis, okay? So this, this right here, this negative, a negative coefficient, so negative one, okay? What, is, what kind of effect does it have? Well, it reflects, all right, across the x-axis, okay? And you guys should have expected that. Okay, so you know that from previous units. So this is a reflection across the x-axis. So now we know what a, a negative amplitude does. So here, the amplitude, uh, when, you, when you have a negative coefficient, the amplitude is found by taking the absolute value of that coefficient. And the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So here, we go up 1. Okay, So A is 1 here. The amplitude is not negative 1. It's 1. And then we go down one. All right, so we go up one from the wave axis. And again, the x-axis is the wave axis with a midline. Okay. And then uh, 
you go from there. So now we know what the negative coefficient does of the function. Remember, always take the absolute value of that number to get the amplitude, because the amplitude is always positive. Okay, always positive number because it is a distance. Okay, so you always take the absolute value of that coefficient to get the amplitude. So now let's kind of play with it here. Let's change the amplitude and change B and then see what happens, okay? So let's take a look at our general function, y is equal to a times the sine of bx here, all right? So this is non-translated, okay, or not translated. So it's not shifted off the uh, x-axis. It's just the amplitude in the period has been affected, but it's not translated, all right? Because h and k is zero, so h, oops, hang on. So h comma k, here, your, trans, your shift right here, all right, is zero comma zero. All right, no shift is what I'm saying. There's no shift. All right, so now let's take a look at it here. So the amplitude is not negative two. It's the absolute value of negative two. All right, so which is two. So we're going to go up one, down one, excuse me, up two, down two from the wave axis, wherever that is, okay? And then the period, well, as you guys know, it's two pi divided by b. So it's two pi divided by the pi thirds. So you multiply by the reciprocal and you get two pi times three over pi. That's a time symbol. Notice the pi's cancel, okay? Pi divided by pi is usually one, all right? And then two times three is usually six. So we have a period of six, so we're gonna go out six units. All right, so now what do we have? So uh, phase shift, well, H and K uh, so our zero, now remember the general function, let's write it down here. The general translated function for sine is y is equal to uh, a times a sine of b, that's a b, okay, b times x minus h and then plus k, where the shift, okay, is h, I can't write this one in, so h comma k. So here, there's no shift because h is zero and k is zero. All right, so no shift. Okay, so h and k is zero comma zero, no shift. And remember the y-axis is always y equals k, so it happens to be y equals zero, and that is called the x-axis. Okay, so the wave axis is the x-axis. So it, it oscillates above and below the x-axis. So what we need to do is we need to go up to, all right, remember amplitude is two, since a is 2, we're going to go up 2 and mark it. We're going to go down 2, all right? So we're going to go down 2 and mark it at negative 2. And the wave has to oscillate between these two lines, okay? So that's the, like, the boundary, because so you can't go higher it or lower than these two lines, because the amplitude is 2 and not 1. It's different than the first parent function where the amplitude was 1. So I just changed the amplitude and the period on this example. That's all I did. So now uh, we have to understand and remember that this uh, negative right here, let's, let's annotate it right here, this makes it reflex, okay? This is a reflection across the wave axis. Across, I'm gonna say wave axis in general because the wave axis is not always the x-axis. So it's, a, it's across the wave axis or the midline. So make sure you take, uh, understand that right there because the wave axis sometimes uh, is different than the x-axis because these some functions um, are different, okay? I'm just trying to fix my handwriting here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to sign usually starts at the origin here. So let's graph this baby. All right, so I'm going to start. Well, actually, let me plot six. I got to go out six units and break it up into four equal parts. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so pay attention to this. I'm going to go out six units. A one, a two a three, a four, a five, a six. So I'm gonna mark six, and then I gotta divide this into four equal parts. All right, and divide into four equal parts, okay? So what is that? Well, six divided by four is one and two fourths, or one and a half. So I go one and a half, mark it. Go another one and a half, mark it, that's at three. One and a half, mark it, and then one and a half again, and you're back to six. So you always take your period and you divide it into four equal parts and then you start plotting. So this function starts at zero, zero. Right here, if you substitute zero in, you're gonna get zero out, 
okay? And, uh, and then you go one fourth the way, and then we don't go up, all right? We go down because it's a reflection. So I'm down here, and then back to the, ampli uh, back to the axis. The wave axis is the x-axis. And then back up to a max, right up here, three fourths of the way, and then back to the axis. All right, so this one goes down and not up because, because the lead coefficient is a negative two instead of positive two. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a break and just take a look at Desmos here. Just wanna have you guys see it. And this is y is equal to negative two, negative two sine of, all right, pi thirds x. So I'm gonna type this in and just take a look at it. So let's do this together here. So y equals, all right, a negative two. All right, sine, you could type in S-I-N or sine, or you just go up here to the digital keyboard and do that. All right, and we're gonna take uh, pi thirds, so pi divided by three, all right, multiply by x, and notice that you have this function here. And so let's take a look at it. So notice the coordinates right there. Okay, and they're the same as these right here. So uh, there you go. So it intersects at three comma zero and six comma zero, just like I showed you down here. And it goes down then up versus up and then down because this is a reflection. Okay, so what I want you guys to do here, since you're working with me, all right, is a screenshot this baby so you can remember how it's done. So let's screenshot it and let's bring it into our lesson. There we go, that's good enough. All right, so now you have it. So let's copy and delete this right here. Let's go back to our lesson and continue here. That's what I love technology here. You can verify things so easily, all right, with cool technology. So there you go, that's the same function right there. All right, so again, the period is from zero to six. So zero to six, there's your period. And again, it goes down and then up because this is a reflection, All right? <clears throat> okay, so that's uh, that example there. So I've done the, the parent function, negative sine x, and then I did one that's not translated. So the third and last one I'm gonna do is, well, the translated one. All right, so let's figure this one out. So we have the general function is y is equal to a times the sine of b times x minus h, all right, plus k. So this has a shift. All right, so we got to figure out everything. So we got A here, we got B here, we got H here, and K here. All right, so let's go for it. So the amplitude is the absolute value of negative three, which is three. So we're going to go up three, down three from the wave axis. The period is found by taking two pi divided by B, which is uh, two pi and divided by pi halves. So you multiply by the reciprocal, and you get two pi times two over pi. The pi's cancel, all right, giving you four. So the period is four. The phase shift, uh, phase shift, the shift, the translation right here is three comma negative one. So I'm gonna go right three down one from the starting point. And the y-axis is always the y-coordinate there. So it's gonna be a y is equal to negative one. So we're gonna start off with the wave axis. So I'm gonna draw a line uh, through negative one. So I'm gonna draw that first. Okay, this is your wave axis or the midline. All right, through negative one. And then I'm gonna go up uh, three, down three from that point. So three up takes you to two, three down takes you to negative four. So again, this is using the amplitude of three. So I go up three from the wave axis, down three from the wave axis. And then you, and the, the wave, wherever it is, has to oscillate between these two lines. Okay, okay, so now what we want to do is start, start graphing. Okay, so here we go. So a normal sine function would start at the origin, all right, but you got to shift it. So get your eyes on the origin and now shift it from the origin. So this is from the origin right here, and we're going to go right three down one, and that's where we start. So my shift here is I'm gonna go right three, all right, and down one, all right, and this is where I start. So 
that's <laughs> that start. My handwriting is a little bit off this morning. All right, so I start from the origin, I shift it, and then I go. Now I have to go four units to the right from this. This is where I start. I go four units to the right. One, two, three, four. This is where I end. Okay, so I start at three comma negative one, then I end at six comma negative one. And it oscillates between there. Now instead of going up and then down cycle, again, this is a reflection right here. So this negative right here, that's a reflection. You have to remember that. So instead of an up-down cycle, we have a down-up cycle. So what I do is I start here at 3, negative 1, and then I go one-fourth the way, and I go down to the minimum. Then I go back to the wave axis, and I go up to a maximum, and then I go back to the axis. So this is a down-up cycle because it's reflection. And then, of course, you better check it. <clears throat> so let's check it. So... Come on, Ainsworth. Let me get my lesson in here. There we go. So let's type this one in. All right, so here we go. So y is equal to, all right, negative 3. All right, a sine. So sine of pi. Let's see, pi, where's pi? Pi divided by 2 this time. All right. And then times x minus 3. And then I have to close that off, so make sure you use parentheses twice here. Okay, and then we have to subtract one because that's a downshift. All right, let's take a look at it. Let's see where we're at. Okay, and then I'm going to graph the, the midline. So y equals negative one. Let's put that in red, click on the gear, and then let's make it red there. So there's the midline in red. And then if you click on the maximums, let's check the maximums here and the minimums. Look at this. This is so cool. So... As you can tell, let's check the graph. Let me see, there's my start point. So there we go. So my start point is 3, comma negative 1. Let me take this one off. And then my next one's at 6, comma 2. So notice this right here, this point is at 6, comma 2. My start is at 3, negative 1. As you guys know, that's, that's where you start. And then I go down to, let me see, right 4, down 4. So my minimum is, should be at 4, comma 4. Let's check this out. Okay, yes it is. All right, and then, and then it ends at 6, 2. And then, excuse me, it ends at 7, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, down 1. So it ends at 7, negative 1, and which is the case. So let's screenshot this bad boy. All right, let's bring this into our lesson here. And so I just show you how to verify your, uh, your graphs with Desmos, all right, with Desmos. All right, so, oops, 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 oops. Okay, there we go. All right, let's bring this into our lesson. This is some cool stuff. Okay, let's just paste it in, hold down and press on your iPad, click the text box and then hold down and press, and you can paste your, your graph in that you used. So there we go. That is how you do it, my friends. All right, so I showed you how to do it manually, and then I showed you how to verify with Desmos. Again, this is a Desmos action. One of my favorite graphing programs. All right, and that is how it's done. And now you do the rest, all of them. Finish this right here and then submit when you're done. There's quite a few, all right? And then go all the way to the end to get practice. This is a 15 page document and we are done here. And then you submit in Canvas when you're done. And then I will see you in class, okay? Hope this helps you out. All right, this is the last and final lesson of translating sine and cosine waves. All right, take care. I'll see you in class. This is Ainsworth. Bye-bye.